We're back in Hartford. Hi there, David Smith with you. Meet the leaders on Optimum Local, and we are talking with uh, legislators and others who have been involved uh, in taking care of your business, the people's business. And one of those is Representative Jonathan Steinberg of uh, Westport. He is uh, representing 136th District. Uh, you don't look as bleary-eyed as many, uh, Jonathan. I think you're I hide it better right. than most. You must do. Your makeup people are very good. Uh, it, you were saying you're, you're a second year freshman. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel so, very seasoned at this so, point. <laughs> First we talk to people who've been here for 20 years, 25 years and so forth, and they've seen the blood, sweat and tears uh, club, up close and personal. But you all were involved till about 2.30 in the morning taking care of some things. You've got a lot more still to do before it's all It's amazing done. how much we have left with only two days to go. Well, and, and what are you hoping to see uh, in the last crush hours? Uh, I am on the Energy and Technology Committee, and we have two bills of great consequence that have yet to come through. I believe the Senate passed the storm response bill last night. That's very important to many people in Connecticut. We don't want to repeat what we went through twice this past year. And then there's another major bill, which is a follow-up on the big energy landmark bill from last year, fixing some things, clarifying some things. So that's important to us too. We hope we get them both through in the next two days. Well, as you said, the the, uh, the storm bill, if you will, whatever storm utility bill, is one that is, is very important uh, to southwestern Connecticut in Absolutely. particular with all the aged trees and so forth that, that cause such a toll for so many people. The rest of the state obviously suffered badly too. But It's uh, interesting, I think the two storms affected different parts of the state. We got hit very bad with the first one. It was more of a coastal storm, but yet it was upstate that got hit worse with the second storm. I think we need to find a solution that works for all parts of the state, yeah. and that means collaborating with the utilities. One could argue that deregulation was not necessarily a great answer for us because it took what might be considered the public trust and put it in the hands of a for-profit corporation that put other priorities ahead of assuring that everybody was going to have service. This is changing. I think that we are on a path for greater oversight and greater accountability. I don't think it's a panacea. I think that we have broader issues of energy transmission and distribution that can't be solved by a bill of this nature. Oversight is, is critical, and needless to say, oversight is one of those things that frequently takes a back seat when there are economic hard times. Mm -hmm. There are many other more active things people would say than oversight. But it really is critical to the, to the well-being of, uh, of all the citizens, as we found when we were without power for eight and a half days uh, in that first storm, and then for a number after that, and many other people did at least as bad or worse. I would say that people have problems with government running things, but one of the functions they expect government to perform is oversight, keeping an eye on those who have responsibility to the, to the citizens of the state. So uh, I think we've, we've served our role appropriately with the hearings we had right after the storm, and really a lot of effort working with the administration, with, uh, with the commissioner of DEEP and others to create some safeguards, some uh, better protocols for both preparation and response, and a basis for which we can start looking at different kinds of solutions than the same old 18,000 miles of transmission lines, which inevitably are going to lead to people being without service when we have a storm. And certainly has, and, uh, and show no inkling of stopping now. Uh, as you go forward, are you seeing a call back for, for you all, uh, perhaps down the line for anything? I think it's indeed possible. Uh, we were thinking that the education bill would be the one thing we'd be called back on. I think that there is still an issue about revenues and whether we will be in good shape. The governor has his rescission authority, but he's up against the cap when it, when it comes to the overall budget. So I think that remains a possibility. I'm open to the idea of coming back. I have some issues with being a part-time legislator. Uh, our problems are long-standing ones. It took decades to build, and here, yet we're only here four or five months of the year trying to solve them. So if we need to come back to get the people's business done, I'm all for it. Well, that's the thing. You know, back when they set up this long and short session thing, uh, times were a little simpler, fewer people to deal with, uh, more bucolic life. Times have changed rather dramatically since and then. government was a lot smaller. A lot smaller, no question about it. It is a pleasure to see you. Uh, Representative Jonathan Steinberg with us from Westport. Thank you so much. I know you've got a busy day and a long day coming your way. I'm ready for it.